Okay, so I'm going to show you how to create a bill of materials table in SolidWorks. So I'm going to create something similar to this. So you'll see it's uh, it's upside down where the parts list starts at the bottom, and it's got an extra header. It also has some custom properties that I set up in the template. And so I'm going to show you how to do all this. And so the place to start is with the template itself. And so since I've got a some custom properties, those custom properties are being pulled from a part template. So I'm going to click on open, change my files to type to template. I'm going to find the part template that I've been working on. So this one happens to be titled Skills National Part. So I'm going to click on it, open it up. And so any custom properties that you want in your bill of materials, you need to create them here. So I'm going to come in through File Properties. And so I've got Number and I've got Name. So those two I'm going to use in my bill of materials. So I've already got them here in my part template. So then the next thing to do is save it and then create a part using that template. So I'll click on new. I'll find my skills national part. I'll open it up and then I just need to model something. And so I'm just going to model something real quick. I'll extrude it, whatever depth. It really doesn't matter. But then I have to save this so that I can put it on a drawing. So I'm just going to save it in, save it on my desktop. I'll just call it Skills National Part. So it's saved. Now I need to create a drawing of this. So I'll do make a drawing. And I've also been working on a Skills National Drawing template. So I'll go ahead and open it up. So there it is. Now I just need to drag a model view on here. So any view is fine. So there I put a 3D view on there. And then come on over to the annotation tab, click on Bill Materials, click on that drawing view. And then when you click on that star, it's going to take you out to where all your Bill Materials tables are listed. So they're all here in this location. So C, C Drive, Program Files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks Lang in English. So I'm just going to click on BOM All and hit Open. Hit the green check mark and then just click a place to insert it. So I've got it inserted in there. So you'll see a bunch of columns in here. The first couple things I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to link to those particular properties, those custom properties. So I'm going to come in here, hover over this table, and I'm going to double click on B. So double left click on B, and you'll see this column type pop up. So I'll click there on part number, and I'm going to go to custom property. When I do that, I get this property name field. Now I can click there and I can select number out of that list. And now this is going to be linked to that number field in my parts. And I'll do the same thing for description. I'll double click on C. So double left click there. And I'm going to change that to be name. And then just click anywhere to get out of that. And now I've got a bunch of columns here that I don't need. So I'll just left click on D and then right click. Come on down to delete and do delete column. And I'll just do that for a number of these. Get rid of stock, get rid of weight, get rid of vendor. And now I'm left with just those four columns that I want to use. So if you want to re rearrange any of these columns, you can just left click and drag. So if you want quantity to be in the second location, you just click on the heading for that particular column and just drag it around and then drop it. So I think that's the order I want them in. So then the next thing we're going to take a look at is setting our column width. So to set your column width, just hover over A, right click, come on down to formatting, and do column width. For this particular one, I'm going to make it 0.5. For the second one here, I'm going to go ahead and format it as well. I'm going to make this one 1 inch. For column C, I'll make it 1.65. And then for column D, I'll make it a half of an inch. And then it's not a requirement. I don't like my columns to resize automatically if, if something's longer than what the cell is. So I'm going to lock them down. So to lock it down, just right click on that heading, come on down to formatting, and do lock column width. I'm just going to do that for all four of these.
And now when you do that, you'll see all those little padlocks show up. So then we'll come on over here, do the same thing for our rows. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and rename these. So instead of item number, I just want it to be item. So you can change the name of any heading just by double clicking on it. Also, I wanted to add another row above. So to add the row above, you hit these two little arrows here on the left that inserts that row in there. And then again, you can just double click on that and then go ahead and edit that text. And I'll just type in parts list for that. Click anywhere outside of that, it'll get me out of there. And now if I want this table to go from the bottom up, I left click on this four headed arrow. I get my table formatting bar up, this very last icon. It toggles from being the table header on top, to the table header on bottom. So now it's on the bottom, so it's gonna go from the bottom up now. All right, so now I've made those changes. I can start working on these rows. So again, just right click on the row. So I'll right click there on three, go to formatting, and I'm gonna format my row height. I'm just gonna make each row a quarter of an inch. So then right click on two, formatting, row height, make it 0.25. And then finally there on row one, do the same thing. Come on down to formatting, row height, type 0.25. And then same thing. I just, I don't like my rows to automatically resize. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the row height on each one of those. And again, that's just kind of a personal preference of what I have. You don't have to do that on yours, but that's what I like. All right, so we've got that done. Last couple things here. If you want to use a different font, you left click here on this four headed arrow. You'll get this table formatting bar and they'll come up. This very first icon here says use document font. So with that checked, it's going to pull off of document properties. If you want to use something besides that, you can click on it and then your font toolbar comes up and you can make adjustments there as you want to but I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine locked to it. Also, if you need to change the formatting of any of these particular cells, you can click on the cell, and then you've got left justification, right justification, and center. So you can adjust those as you want. Also, you'll notice that some of these, uh, once we actually include some information in here, so let me go ahead and we'll do that here in a little bit. But some of the times the numbers are real close, real tight here on the side. So to add a little space between that, your vertical line and where the information starts, you adjust this horizontal cell padding. So I'll just go ahead and change it for this column to be a 16th of an inch. And then same thing here for column C. I'll go ahead and check and make sure that that's also set to be 16th of an inch. So I've got those set. The last few things I have here is um, just to go ahead and save this and save it in the location to where when I create a bill of materials, it's automatically there. So to show you where that location's at, I'm gonna come up to options, click on options there. That takes me to this box and to find your different file locations for anything, it's on system options and come on down to file locations. And then show folders for if you just change that to bomb tables, I'll give you your path for where our, where uh, your bill materials tables are saved automatically. So to save it, I'm just going to click on that, right click on that four headed arrow, come on down to save as, click on that. Mine doesn't take me automatically to that folder, so I need to go ahead and navigate to it. So for me, that was the C drive and then program files. And then SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks, Lang, English, and then right there you'll find them all. So then I'll go ahead and save this one in this location, and I'll just call this Skills Bomb, and I'll hit save. Oh, and since we updated to Windows 10, this gives me the uh, message that I can't save in this location, even though I do have administrator rights. So to get around this, I'm just gonna hit no here. And actually what I can do is save it on my desktop. 
and then actually this is the weirdest thing but i can go out to windows explorer now and i can copy and paste it from my desktop into that location so just using file explorer go to desktop i'll find that file that i just created it says skills bomb and i'll copy it then go to my c drive and then that same location so program files solidworks corp solidworks lang english and now i can paste it in there it gives me this little message about access being denied i can just hit continue and i'll go ahead and put it in there so now it's there so now i can uh, close out all these and if i open up another new part then that information will work in there and i can also go ahead and show you how if you double click in this information click on uh, keep link i can type a part number in here and same thing for the name column you could type in there and give it a name such as disk and when i go to save it if i go ahead and hit save all then it's adding that information i just need to save my drawing first so i'll just save this drawing to the desktop but it's adding that information to this part file so when i open this part file the information i just typed in goes right here so i'm showing you how it's it's linked back to the part file document so hopefully that's everything you need to know about creating uh, bomb tables and good luck with it and let me know how things go. Thanks for watching.